Now, recognizing our roles under the Constitution, united in our love of our country, we now engage in a strong symbol of American democracy, the peaceful and respectful exchange of power. I now pass this gavel, which is larger than most gavels here, but the gavel of choice of Mr. Speaker Boehner. I now pass, pass this. <laughs> I now pass this gavel and the sacred trust that goes with it to the new speaker. God bless you, Speaker Boehner. still just me. <laughs> uh, Madam Speaker, thank you for your kind words uh, uh, and thank you for your service to this institution. Uh, secondly, I want to welcome all of our new members and their families on what is a very special day. All of us who have been here uh, remember vividly that first day uh, that, uh, that we served here. And uh, I think any of us can tell you that uh, you'll never forget today. Uh, my own family is here as well. I think you've just met uh, Debbie, and next to Debbie are Lindsay and Trisha, our two daughters. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, ten of my eleven brothers and sisters and uh, sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws uh, are here as well. Uh, my poor brother Greg, uh, who runs a restaurant down in uh, Georgia, was unable to be here, but I wanted to acknowledge him. I also want to acknowledge uh, some of my uh, close friends that are here from, uh, from the other side of the Capitol. You know, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, is here, and, and two of my best buds, uh, Richard Burr from North Carolina, Saxby Chambles from Georgia, along with, uh, you know, my buddy Latham. Uh, thank you for being here, gentlemen. I appreciate it. I'm uh, honored and humbled to represent a great, uh, hardworking community in Congress. The peoples of, of Ohio's 8th Congressional District uh, continue to afford me the privilege to serve, for which I am deeply grateful. We gather here today at a time of great challenges. And nearly one in 10 of our neighbors is out of work. Health care costs are still rising for American families. Our spending has caught up with us, and our debt soon will eclipse the entire size of our national economy. Hard work and tough decisions will be required of the 112th Congress. No longer can we fall short. No longer can we kick the can down the road. The people voted to end business as usual, and today we begin to carry out their instructions. In the Catholic faith, we enter into a season of service by having ashes marked on our head. Uh, the ashes remind us that life in all, for, all of its forms is very fragile. Uh, our time on this earth, fleeting. But as the ashes are delivered, we hear those humbling words. Remember you are dust, 
and to dust you shall return. The American people have humbled us. They have refreshed our memories to just how temporary the privilege of serving is. They have reminded us, us that everything here is on loan from them. That includes this gavel, which I accept cheerfully and gratefully, knowing that I am but its caretaker. After all, this is the people's house. This is their Congress. It's, not a, it's about them, not about us. What they want is a government that's honest, accountable, and responsive to their needs. A government that respects individual liberty, honors our heritage, and bows before the public that it serves. Let's start with the rules package that the House will consider today. Uh, if passed, it will change how this institution operates with an emphasis on real transparency, greater accountability, and a renewed focus on our Constitution. Our aim will be to give the government back to the American people. In seeking this goal, we will part with some of the rituals uh, that have come to characterize this in institution under majorities, both Republican and Democrat alike. We will dispense with the conventional wisdom that bigger bills are always better. Uh, that fast legislating is good legislating. Allowing amendments and open debate makes the legislative process less efficient uh, than our forefathers had intended. These misconceptions have been the basis for the rituals of a modern Washington. Uh, they, in my opinion, have not been served uh, well to the American people. Today, mindful of the lessons of the past, that we open a new chapter. Legislators and the public will have three days to read a bill before it comes to a vote. Legislation will be more focused, properly scrutinized, and constitutionally sound. Committees, once bloated, will be smaller with a renewed mission, including oversight. Uh, old rules that have made it easy to increase spending will be replaced by new reforms uh, that make it easier to cut spending. And we will start by cutting Congress's own budget. But above all else, we will welcome the battle of ideas. Encourage it, engage it, openly, honestly, and respectfully. As the chamber closest to the people, the House works best when it is allowed to work its will. And I ask members of this body to join me in recognizing this common truth. And to my colleagues in the majority, my message is this. We will honor our pledge to America, built on a process of listening to the American people. We will stand firm uh, on our constitutional principles that built our party and built the great nation. We will do these things, however, in a manner that restores and respects the time-honored right of the minority to an honest debate, uh, a fair and open process. And to my friends in the minority, I offer a commitment, openness. Once a tradition of this institution, but increasingly scarce in recent decades, will be the new standard. There were no open rules in the House in the last Congress. Uh, in this one, there will be many. And with this restored openness, however, come a restored responsibility. You will not have the right to willfully disrupt the proceedings of the People's House. But you will always have the right to a robust debate in an open process that allows you to represent your constituents, to make your case, offer alternatives, and be heard. In time, I believe this framework uh, will allow uh, the House to be a place where the people's will is done. It will also, I hope, rebuild trust uh, amongst us and the people we serve, and in so doing, 
uh, provide a guidepost for those uh, who follow us in the service of our nation. To our new members, Democrat and Republican alike, uh, as you take the oath today, I know that you do so mindful of this shared goal. Uh, and, and know that your constituents have placed much trust in you. As Speaker, I feel part of my job is to help uh, each of you do your job well, regardless of your political party. My, my hope is, is that every new member, and indeed every member, will be comfortable with approaching me with regard to matters of the House. Uh, we will not always get it right, and we will not always agree on what is right. There's a great deal of scar tissue that's been built up on both sides of the aisle. We can't ignore that, nor should we. My belief has always been that we can disagree without being disagreeable. Now, that's why it's critical that this institution operate in a manner that permits a free exchange of ideas and resolves our honest differences through a fair debate and vote. We may have different, sometimes very different ideas about how to go achieving the common good. Uh, it is why we serve. Uh, let us now move forward, humble in our demeanor, uh, steady in our principles, uh, dedicated to proving worthy of the trust and confidence that has been placed in each of us. If we brace ourselves to do our duty uh, and say the say, do what we say we're going to do, I don't think there's, uh, uh, together, anything that we can't accomplish, again, on behalf of the people we serve. More than a country, America is an idea. Uh, and it's our job to pass that posterity of blessings that have been bestowed on us uh, to those generations that follow us. I want to wish all of you the very best. Welcome to the People's House. Welcome to the 112th Congress. I am now uh, ready to take the oath of office, and I ask the Dean of the House, uh, the Honorable John Diggle of Michigan, uh, to administer the oath of office. I thank you. If the gentleman from Ohio will please raise his right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you're about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. is a difference between us. And, and we've been talking about how much we agree on different issues, but there really is a difference between us. And it's basically this. We don't think the government should be in control of all of this.